In an earlier film, we considered a labour market where both demand and supply curves were linear. But sometimes a labour market, or indeed a goods market, might be better described using non-linear relationships. So here we're going to look at a labour market with non-linear relationships and we'll begin with a non-linear demand curve. Firms buy labour services because of the value of the service the labour produces. The student who leaves university with a degree will get a wage reflecting the value of what she produces for the firm. The firm won't pay her £30,000 per year for producing £20,000 worth of output. So labour demand is determined by productivity. More particularly, it's determined by marginal productivity. Suppose that the wage rate falls. A firm takes on an additional worker if the extra productivity of that employee is at least as great as the wage rate. This is why the demand curve for labour is negatively sloped. But in the short run, the amount of capital the firm has constrains it. The marginal productivity of the waiter is high if there's room in the restaurant, but if the place is full, the marginal product is low. At that point, the quantity of labour demanded doesn't increase much even if wage rates fall. It's this that helps to explain why labour, in the short run at least, is likely to have a non-linear function. Labour supply may well be non-linear also. Many professions require significant training and natural ability. Veterinary medicine. A rise in wages increases the quantity of labour supplied but at high wage rates a further wage rise may not increase labour supply very much if the great majority of those with the necessary skills, aptitude and dedication are already doing the job. Similarly, the market for unskilled labourers here in the United States may well be non-linear. On this street corner, employers and labourers gather to exchange their labour, often for cash. The willingness of these labourers to accept employment is likely to be non-linear as wage rates vary from the minimum wage up to $15 an hour. We're uh, out here today looking for work, waiting for work, uh, waiting for employers to and contractors uh, in the construction industry to come by and pick us up for labour work. So this, uh, they're all going up to this guy because he's, um, he's uh, an employer and um, so they, they, they got a chance to get a job from him? Yes, correct. Um, he's an employer, um, looks like he's probably in the landscaping business and so he'll get maybe three or four guys this morning. Um, every day there's about 75 of us that come to the corner here. On an average day, how many of those uh, 75 of you are actually going to find work? I would say probably about at least 25% of us. If a labour market has both non-linear supply and demand curves, how can we find the equilibrium wage rate and the quantity of labour supplied? Remember though that we're assuming that an equilibrium is easily reached. In any particular labour market this may not be so. In this instance we have a labour market and the demand function has a power term in it, but the supply function is also a quadratic. Now the demand curve we're going to use is W equals minus Q squared minus 8Q plus 30, where W is the wage rate, the labour price, in euros per hour. And the supply curve is given as W equals 2Q squared plus 4Q plus 20, where Q is the quantity of labour in units of 10,000. So although we've got power terms here, we still have a downward sloping demand curve and an upward sloping supply curve.
In equilibrium, supply equals demand. So here, 2q squared plus 4q plus 20 equals minus q squared minus 8q plus 30. So 3q squared plus 12q minus 10 equals 0. And we have a quadratic equation to solve. The formula for the quadratic is ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0 with solutions that x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Now here, a equals 3, b equals 12, c equals minus 10. So x equals minus 12 plus or minus the square root of 12 squared minus 4 times 3 times minus 10 all over 6 which gives us minus 12 plus or minus the square root of 144 plus 120 all over 6. So we have two solutions here. The first one is minus 12 plus the square root of 264 over 6, which to three decimal places is 0 0.708. So the equilibrium quantity then would be 708,000, the number of units of labor in the industry. Now the quadratic also has another solution, but it's a minus number, which in our case is meaningless. We could check whether we've got the right answer. 3q squared plus 12q minus 10 equals 0. And we think our answer is 0 0.708. So that gives us 1.054 plus 8.496 minus 10 equals 0, which is correct, so we've got it right. Now we found the equilibrium quantity of labor in the market. Now we can find the equilibrium price of labor services. To find that wage rate, we can substitute into one of our equations, either the supply or the demand curve. We'll do it with the supply curve. W equals 2q squared plus 4q plus 20, which equals 1.003 plus 2.832 plus 20, which equals 23.835 euros per hour. This being the equilibrium wage rate for this kind of employee. So in markets where we have non-linear equations, whether it's in labor markets or goods markets, we can still solve for price and quantity with an understanding of quadratic equations.